Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Electric, your one-stop destination to decode complex electrical concepts and make them easy, practical and interview ready. Today we are diving deep into something that powers entire cities yet often goes unnoticed, electrical substations. What are they? Why are they so important and how do engineers troubleshoot issues inside one? By the end of this video, you'll not only understand every key component of a substation, but also gain the practical knowledge to tackle real world troubleshooting and ace your interviews. So let's get started. Imagine electricity like water flowing through a city. Power stations are like the water source and your home is the tap. The substation, that's the pressure regulator controlling, transforming and routing electricity safely and efficiently across the grid. In simpler terms, an electrical substation is a control and conversion hub that manages voltage levels, stepping them up or down to ensure smooth power transmission and distribution. Without substations, the electricity generated at power plants could never reach your home appliances safely. Now let's break it down. What's inside a substation? First, transformers. These are the heart of the substation. They step up the voltage for long distance transmission or step it down for distribution to your neighborhood. Circuit breakers and isolators. These act as the substation's safety guards. Circuit breakers automatically disconnect circuits during falls, while isolators ensure safe maintenance by manually disconnecting parts of the system. Buzz bars. Think of them as the main highway for electrical current, connecting incoming and outgoing lines. Current and potential transformers or CTs and PTs. These are measurement and protection devices that help monitor voltage, current and power, crucial for system control. Lightning arresters. These protect the substation from lightning strikes and voltage surges. And finally, control panels and protection relays. The brains of the operation, they constantly monitor electrical parameters and take automatic actions during faults. And that's just scratching the surface. But these are the building blocks you will need to understand 90% of substation operations. Now here's the basic flow of how a substation works. Electricity from a generating station enters the transmission substation at very high voltages, often 132 kV or more. Then it passes through transformers that step it down to safer distribution levels, say 33 kV or 11 kV, which are then supplied to industries or distribution substations near your homes. Each level of conversion and control ensures minimal power loss, maximum safety and continuous supply even when something goes wrong. Now let's get practical. What if something does go wrong inside a substation? Troubleshooting here isn't guesswork. It's a systematic process. First, start with symptoms. Power outage, tripped circuit breaker, voltage fluctuation. Identify the visible issue. Then check the protection logs or SCADA alarms. Modern substations record every fault detail. Look for error codes or relay triggers. Then verify connections and components. Test CTs, PTs, breakers and relay circuits for open or short circuits. Then isolate and test. Use isolators to safely disconnect sections and test continuity, insulation resistance and phase balance. Finally, root cause analysis. Once identified, fix or replace the faulty component, reset protection relays and re-energize the circuit. This logical approach helps prevent repeated faults and keeps the system stable. And it's exactly the mindset interviewers look for when they ask you about troubleshooting scenarios. Substations aren't just for utilities, they are everywhere. Industrial substations power massive machinery and automation lines. Renewable energy substations manage output from solar and wind farms. Urban distribution substations ensure reliable power for homes, hospitals and offices. Each setup is unique, but they all rely on the same core principles of control, conversion and protection. If you are preparing for interviews, expect questions like what are the main components of substation? How would you troubleshoot a tripping transformer circuit? Why do we use CTs and PTs in protection systems? 
so remember focus on concept clarity and problem solving logic not just memorization companies look for engineers who think systematically under pressure and there you have it the complete beginner's guide to electrical substations from components to troubleshooting and industrial applications if you found this helpful drop a like share it with your friends and subscribe to stay tuned for more real world electrical engineering insights because here we don't just learn concepts we understand how they power the world around us thanks for watching and until next time stay curious stay safe and keep engineering your future